Tonight's scouting report is brought to you by the employee owners of Avis Incorporated. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. Back here at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University, I'm joined tonight by Ron Perry, the former Holy Cross All-America. First of all, Ronnie, keys for Pittsburgh tonight. Well, as usual, they have to get it done inside, but important in this game, Sean Miller from the point guard spot. He'll try to get it down to Brian Shorter and Bobby Martin, and they'll try to increase and up the tempo of this game if they can. Jason Williams makes his return after a one-game suspension. Key guy for St. John's. He'll have to get it done in the paint area. Matt Bruss could have a big game, and the story, Malik Seeley out with the ankle injury, which he heard on Saturday against UConn. Barry Milhaven will start in his spot. St. John's has to try to control the tempo of this game and rebound with a tough hit front line. All right, Ron Perry, and we'll be back with the introduction of tonight's starting lineups right after these messages. Frank Daly and Ron Perry back here on the campus of St. John's University, just outside of New York City. That's where we are at Alumni Hall. And Pittsburgh comes into the game 10 and 8 overall, 3 and 4 in the Big East. St. John's 12 and 6, and the Redmen are an even 500 at 4 and 4 in conference play. Let's go now for the introduction of tonight's starting lineups. Here at Alumni Hall, our public address announcer, Jim Hall. Welcome to Alumni Hall of St. John's University for tonight's game between the Panthers of Pittsburgh University and the Redmen of St. John's. Let's greet the starting players. At the forward positions for Pittsburgh, a six foot six sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number double zero, Brian Shorter. For St. John's, a six foot nine junior from New York, New York, number 11, Jason Williams. For the Panthers, a six foot four sophomore from Steelton, Pennsylvania, number 20, Darrell Porter. And for the Redmen, a six foot five junior from Port Washington, New York, number 13, Gary Milhaven. At center for Pittsburgh, a six foot nine sophomore from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 55, Bobby Martin. For St. John's, a six foot 11 freshman from Sunnyside, New York, number 11, Robert Bourdain. the Panthers, a six foot one sophomore from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number three, Sean Miller. For the Redmen, a six foot freshman from Syracuse, New York, number 12, Jason Buchanan. For Pittsburgh, a six foot three sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 22, Jason Matthews. And for St. John's, a six foot five senior from Babylon, New York, number 23, Matt Bruss. The head coach of the Panthers is Paul Evans, and on the red line, Blue Panacea. We'll be back with our opening tip right after these messages from your local station. Genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages gives you the most ads and the most choices. No wonder it's the most used book around. The neighbors are foxes. Could be a perfect match. The Genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. There are over 4,000 beers brewed in Germany, but only a few have made it to America. And of those few, the one that's made it to the top is Beck's. Beck's, the number one imported German beer. Beers keep pouring into this country from all over the world. But the best beer still comes from Germany. And the best German beer in America is Beck's. Beck's, the number one imported German beer. Frank Daly with Ron Perry back here at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University. 
St. John's in their home whites with the red trim. And there's a look at the comparisons and records. See anything that jumps out at you, Ron? Well, the three-point shooting for Pitt. Sean Miller has made more three-point field goals than has all of the St. John's team. In between Miller and Matthews, they have taken more three-point shots than the whole St. John's team. And again, Barry Millhaven will be starting tonight for St. John's. The other thing, Frank, is tempo. Pitt will look to push the ball up and down the court if they can in this game. To do that, I think they've got to get out of the gate quickly. St. John's will try to settle things down and play a half-court game if they can. And Pittsburgh in their yellow uniforms with the blue trim, and St. John's controls the tip. This is Jason Buchanan up against Sean Miller. We'll take an eye on Millhaven, who pops out now. Jason Williams back off that one game suspension did not look rusty. He sure didn't and before the suspension he'd been averaging close to 20 a game. He's just under 20 for the season. He can really get it going inside. John Miller defense by Jason Buchanan. Here's shorter with the one hander a bit too stiff. And a foul on the rebounding action. I think both teams are really going to go at each other in the trenches in this one. Neither team is particularly deep. So they'll try to get the key people in foul trouble. Paul Evans does not want to see that with his big people. Foul was on Bryant Shorter. And the possession belongs to St. John's University. They lead it 2-0. This is Matt Brust. Post up pass down there to Williams. Won't go. The tip won't fall off. That's going to be a St. John ball. St. John's has only been out-rebounded in one game this year. And it was the 28-point loss on Saturday to Connecticut without number 11, Jason Williams. And certainly the rebounding will play a big role in this game. Pitt now in a 2-3 zone. They've been mostly man so far. The mistake is picked up by Jason Buchanan. No, Tip Paulo won't go down, but there's the big guy inside Jason Williams. He's got the point so far tonight. St. John's is really banging the boards, particularly at the offensive end. A lot of white jerseys keeping it alive. Minute and a half gone by. Offensive call on Shorter. That's his second already. That's a big call because Paul Evans does not have a lot of answers to go to on the bench. The first player he'll probably bring off will be Rod Brooken, but he'd prefer not to have to bring him in for Shorter. Shorter, the key man, down low. St. John's University lost their last two games to Georgetown and Connecticut. The Georgetown game was 75-64. Steps taken inside by Robert Wardan. And the ball turns around at... Pittsburgh will come back up here at Alumni Hall. St. John's has had to go through some adversity. Michael Porter and Boo Harvey, the backcourt from last year, ineligible because of academics this year. And they've had Wardan injured for part of this season. Malik Seeley out tonight. And Jason Williams missed the last one. This is an all-sophomore lineup for Pittsburgh. But they have a lot more experience than most sophomores would have because they played a lot as a freshman. That's true, Frank. And People forget, though, that they are just sophomores. I think that's why they've been a little bit up and down this year. A 12-footer is hit by Miller. Now, that's what he worked a lot on during the offseason, pulling up for the jump shot. Although this year, he's taken better than 7 out of 10 shots when he shoots them up from three-point land. So he likes the long bomb. Jason Buchanan to Brust. Out inside, Wardan. Nice look inside. Robert Wardan starting for the first time after six games not starting in the last one nearly steals there that call is going against Millhaven of St. John's Barry Millhaven must be really pumped up for this ball game doesn't quite get good enough position there played a season high nine minutes in the last ball game against Connecticut earned himself a start in this one at the small forward spot Shorter, the shot pop is good. Ryan Shorter, the leading scorer and rebounder on this pit club at 18.9 points per game, gets the first two points for him tonight. Paul Evans taking a little bit of a gamble staying with Shorter. Certainly if he picks up a third, he'll be out of there. Ball's going to go back to St. John's. 6-4 ball game. St. John's leads. St. John's has lost their last two, as we said. They were defeated by Georgetown and Connecticut over the weekend. Big, 80-52. That was a pretty close ball game. I believe it was eight or nine points at halftime, and Connecticut just went on the big second half run. Good defense by Pitt. Jason Matthews with a run in the lane and a scoop. Oh, what a ball! Oh. By Bobby Martin. Oh, my, did he follow that up with the left hand slam? 
Luke I think he thinks it was over the cylinder. Yeah, he's making yeah. that signal. Referee felt that it sprung out of that area. It cannot be over or above that cylinder. His offensive goaltending, not the call there. Roddy, what are we looking at defensively from Pitt? The two-three zone, Frank, trying to force St. John's to look to their perimeter game. Well, there's the perimeter shot by Bruss. That's a three. Well, we had him a week ago where he made five three-pointers and was just outstanding in the second half of the Georgetown game when Jason Williams, after he had been ejected. That Bruss averaging 12.2 points the ball game, 9-6, St. John's on top. And there's another nice baseline move by Bobby Martin for his second field goal, averaging 13.8 per contest. And it's a one-point St. John's lead. The Redmen have the ball. That's Jason Buchanan off to press. This looks like a 1-2-2 two, two now, but after the pass to the corner, it's a 2-3. That's a 2. So important to hit the outside jump shot to get the defense to extend. Opens up the inside. Defensive board is claimed by Jason Williams, and here is Buchanan. John Miller providing the token pressure. Or Dan shut down. Rust. Big basketball oh. by Barry Millhaven, the junior out of Port Washington, New York. That's a big confidence oh, yeah. for Millhaven. He made his first field goal. In case you haven't heard of Barry Millhaven in St. John's last game, Saturday over the weekend against UConn. So that's a big one to get him off out of the shoot. Shorter from a shallow wing position hits. His second field goal. Pittsburgh got eight out of their first ten points from the paint area from Shorter and Martin. No question about it. They want to go down low and try to attack St. John's. Five minutes a lap. First half. Jason Williams. Oh, he's hot. That's his third field goal. He has six. He also averages 7.8 rebounds per game. He's a very smooth player. I think Pitt has a little bit better shooting from the outside between Miller and Matthews in this one. Could spell the difference because both teams doing a great job inside so far. Turnover, Pittsburgh. Not pretty, but effective. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Matt Rust on the assist. Buchanan with his second field goal. One thing about Rust, he'll find a way to get it done. Blue collar type player. Somehow got a handle just at the last moment. Foul off the ball, common foul. As we look at Paul Evans, foul is on Bobby Martin. We have a timeout. We'll be back right after this. You know what a three-point play is in basketball. Here's what it is at Days Inns. Great rooms, great prices, and great locations. And thanks to our 130 owners throughout the Big East Conference, you not only get a great room at a great price, but you get pools, lounges, restaurants, even meeting rooms. So remember, great rooms, great prices, and great locations. Now that's a winning three-point play. Spirit at your Dodge dealer means searching for a new car won't give you the blues. The front-wheel drive Dodge Shadow has over 40 standard features, our 770 protection plan, and ES discount package savings of $700. After all, why should you get the blues when all you really want is a good value? The new Spirit of Dodge. You know, Piedmont Airlines is making it easy for you to visit old friends, like the Crabapples. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Crabapple. Or your favorite acting teacher. Emote, students. Emote! Or your old college buddies. Hey, guys. Piedmont presents Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. You can even visit an old army buddy. Yo! This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited.
Ron, right now, St. John's out rebounding. Pitt 5 1. What's it mean? Well, they're really going at the boards, but look at this pressure by Pitt turning up the easy field goal. Jason Matthews with his first two. He averages 16.2 per ball game, and there's that Pitt pressure on the inbound pass. That's right. It's an 18 12 ball game. The Redmen lead it. The Redmen have the ball. Yeah, that's full court style. Pitt would like to get out into a running game. They've got better team quickness than St. John's. They want to pressure the backcourt. Oh, nice fade from the baseline by Jason Williams. He has four field goals tonight. Yeah, he looks sharp down low. Not too bad a gamble by Pitt to put the full court pressure on. St. John's will be controlled against it and won't really attack unless they've got a three on two or a two on one advantage. Terrell Porter releases to Miller, guarded by Jason Buchanan. St. John's tight man to man right now. Shorter against Wardan. The jump half hook. And Shorter in with six. Really having a fine first season for Paul Evans. Ryan Shorter, just under 19 a game, but game in, game out, he seems to be double figures in scoring and rebounding, a lot like Jason Williams for St. John. St. John's lead is up to six. 13.09 to go first half. Pitt staying with that 1 2 2 or 3 2 zone. Rust in with the trees. <laughs> wow, shot, he got a roll. Matt Rust with five. Such an intense competitor finds a way. Jason Matthews. Russ gives him a lot of room. Porter, 17 Porter, perfect. Porter's an excellent athlete. Pitt really goes with a three-guard lineup. They call Darrell Porter the weak side forward. Gives up a little height for weak side rebounding, as does Barry Milhaven for St. John's in this game. St. John's has made nine field goals in a row. Not that time. Though. Both teams coming out shooting it very well. Shorter muscled it up. No. Another chance. Martin. But he was fouled by Jason Williams. I don't think the intensity on the defensive end has really been there yet. Both teams getting off very good shots. The entry pass inside has not been a problem. See, both teams have had great success down low. When you see that, you tend to see the high percentages. Darrell Porter takes a little blow now, and the sixth man for Pittsburgh, Rod Brookins. Comes into the ball game. He's averaging 9.5 points per game. Miller is also down. Martin now with five. And he can pull it off the glass as evidenced by that graphic. Made one of two. St. John's comes up. Plotting style offense here on the sequence. Very well, slow. Lou Karnasek wants to keep the tempo that way. That's right. And St. John's tends to be able to do that when they're playing from in front. And by virtue of the good shooting, when you've got the lead. You can walk the ball up the court a little bit. Buchanan looks through the zone. Oh. Well, St. John's got a break there. St. Hey, John's is really pounding the glass. Shot goes up. A lot of white jerseys going after it. We have a timeout. 11.46 remaining in the first half. 22-17. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. I was hired midway into the revolution. The independent forces, uh, you know, PC users, had begun to form guerrilla work groups up together like Tinker Toys. Stubbornly independent, but cut off from the main source of power. No electronic mail from one outpost to the other. No shared resources. Chaos was the price they were paying for freedom. So we put up Wang's PC land. It networks the PCs, yes. But it also networks the networks. We asked Saab 900 turbo drivers to describe their car's performance. Woo! The way it's built. It's comfort. Hmm. Roominess and how they feel about their choice. But why ask? The car speaks for itself. Buy or lease one of the most intelligent cars ever built at your local Saab dealers today. The Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East basketball run. Both clubs shooting extremely well. St. John's is better than 70%, Pitt over 60%, but St. John's 
has the advantage seven to three especially it appears on the offensive boards yeah they're really banging I think St. John's has come out more aggressive in this game they're hungry and I think it's well documented in the Big East this is a tough place to beat St. John's at Alumni Hall well Pitt did it last season Pitt won both games against St. John's last year Millhaven for three not that time long rebound corral by Porter Porter trying to catch up to it he does nice play Darrell Porter that's a two from straight on, nothing but net. Porter's second field goal averaging 8.1 per game. Now that's the one area of Porter's game that he's worked hard on, the outside shooting, because he's a fine athlete. He starts putting that 18-footer into play. Awfully tough to cover. Singleton's into the ball game for St. John's. It's like a 2-3 now for Pitt. They've been using a little 1-2-2. Williams left, no one there. And the mistake picked up. by Bobby Martin and ball's going to belong to Pitt 22 to 19 St. John's leading Paul Evans in his third year at Pittsburgh University his club lost last week to Villanova at Villanova on Saturday 79 78 keep in mind they are giant killers they've knocked off some big clubs this season or have shorter misses and the Redmen come back down at St. John's, if they don't have the advantage, they'd like to get themselves into a half-court style game. Singleton blocked from behind by Darrell Porter. Here's Porter on the return pass. Didn't have it. It's going to be a St. John ball. Nice hustle by Barry Milhaven and Matt Brust on that one. I think Milhaven got the hand on it. Porter had his eyes on a big jam. He wanted to wind up. It was Milhaven. Brust from behind. Off of Porter's foot. John Miller back into the ball game. Jason Matthews sits down for Pitt. So Millhaven, the starting effort has paid off. He's come out very aggressively in this one, although. Not a good pass by Millhaven then. He tried to connect with Singleton. Got to bounce it. John Miller, long lead, and Tennifer for Martin. Knocked out of bounds. Still a pitfall. Kind of a sloppy sequence the last few times up and down the court. I'd like to see players in the fast break action go more to the bounce pass as opposed to trying to lob it in there. John Miller pulls the trigger. Big rebound <laughs> by Matt Brush. Don't get away of those elbows. Yeah, it's twisting no. and turning a little bit. <laughs> Gets the crowd going a little bit. It's kind of quiet so far. Halfway through the first half, 22 to 19, St. John. Jason Williams can't connect on the shot baseline move. Here's Miller. That's a two. Oh, it's a real real water. Water. He's really got the rhythm going. I haven't seen him shoot the ball so fluidly. Just pulled up and drained that one. Darrell Porter now has six. And we're going to break into action. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. First Jersey National Bank is changing its name to National Westminster Bank. Now, in video stores, the best Dirty Harry ever. It's a jungle out there, and only Dirty Harry can tame it. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. Welcome to the jungle. In the Deadpool. pool. Bring it home on video cassette. These days, there's something quite exhilarating about Pepsi. The Pepsi Special Edition Pontiac Grand Prix SE. One of over 200 we're giving away in the tasty excitement sweepstakes. Enter now, before it's gone. Visit the specially marked Pepsi displays at your participating A&P store for your chance to win one of 10 Pontiac Grand Prix SEs in the Pepsi Tasty Excitement Sweepstakes. Listen to Z100 for details. And there are some evidence as to how up and down the season has been for Pitt. They've been giant killers one week, and just a few days later, they lose to perhaps teams they should beat. Uh, it's hard to explain. I think part of it is a, it's a young team. Paul Evans has started five sophomores most of the season, and part of it is a limited bench to go to. Home run ball. By Press. All the way up to Millhaven. Whoops. Good hustle by Porter, though, to make it a difficult one for Millhaven. On this trip, Pitt will try to go ahead. Brook it. Good job by St. John's to try to attack the full court man-to-man -man pressure. Brooklyn is not shy. Oh, a near third foul by Brian Short. A lot of bumping with Singleton. Singleton snapped down the rebound, and St. John's on the attack. Rust. 
directing traffic. Matched up on this trip against Sean Miller. Singled in. Hit. Porter seems to be everywhere the ball is in this first half. Miller tried the bank. No, and there's Shorter climbing over a back. Whoops, that's his third. Well, it seems like it was just a matter of time. He got the two very quick ones, and he continues to play an aggressive style. Went for the ball on this one, but did some climbing as well. A lot of bumping. He's got it, but he's all over, brushed back. That's number three. And this is a problem for Paul Evans. He does not have a deep bench, and now he has his star player in foul trouble with three. So what's he going to do, Ron? Well, he's got Rod Brooken out there. Brooken has been the sixth man for you know since the early stages of this year he's played better off the bench shot it better and he'll play the the uh, number four spot really now and Darrell Porter at the three so it leaves Pitt with a smaller front line for sure to see if St. John's can make hay off the boards. Pitt stays in that zone the two three. Russ singled in against Porter a mismatch there Mark came over to help out. Well, that's what St. John's will try to do right now they'll try to Dump it down low if they can. And Billy Singleton knows how to find the seams against the zone very well. And Wardan is learning very quickly. Darrell Porter picks up his first, and there's another substitution for St. John's. Terrence Mullen comes into the ball game, and Barry Millhaven gets a nice uh, hand here from the folks. He had some good minutes. He certainly did not hurt St. John's out there, and I think if anything, he contributed to the aggressive play which St. John's started off in this first game. Not to mention the three he drilled. As we look at Singleton at the free throw line. Not a bad free throw shooter at 76.3 point uh, three per game. Think about Singleton. He really knows how to play the game. He slowed a little bit by reconstructive knee surgery that he had. Ron Rutledge knocking it over with Luke Parnaseca. St. John's now with a two. There's the free throw percentage. Not bad from the field either. Singleton was prop 48 a year ago, so he had to work a little rust off this year. But certainly has had some quality minutes, and as a matter of fact, has scored in double figures in seven of his last eight outings for St. John. So he really has done a job off the bench. Miller with a drive. Brooken. That is a three. It's actually a two. Good teamwork by the officials. He must have had the big toe. One said yes. On the line. And no. Had that gone, it would have been the 16th three-point field goal for Brooklyn, but it stays as a two. That's really an angle thing for the referees, and the two officials that time conferred with each other, and sometimes a toe can hit the line. That's only a deuce. Russ. Singleton. Short push. Nice has shot. Arc. Excellent shot by Singleton. That's his first field goal. We'll go along with two free throws. Pitt has to do a better job recognizing from the forward slot when St. John sneaks along the baseline. There's a common foul outside. Jason Buchanan picks it up for the Redmen. Been a cleanly played first half so far. Neither team in the bonus rank. We haven't seen a lot of real fast break action. It's been slowed down somewhat. Starting to see more perimeter shooting and not as much fouling. St. John's had a streak of making nine in a row and then they cool off and miss their next six. So they've been streaky in that kind of season for them. They've won five, lost a couple, won five again. It's an interesting matchup here with Thrust on Miller. Got the height advantage. Miller the quicker first step, though. Matthews finds Martin. Got a reach foul inside. I think it was on Wardan attacking Bobby Martin. And we're going to have a very busy halftime. We'll talk about some of those sensational first-year players in the Big East. We'll look at what has happened in the Big East in the last seven days or so, and we'll check first half stats and highlights here tonight between St. John's and Pitt. All coming up at halftime. Hey! Little man-to-man -man defense on the inbounds. Works for Pitt. Offensively, that is, against the Mandy. Brooklyn now has four, averaging 9.5 per ball game. And it's a one-point game again, St. John's by one. Generally don't see that. You see the zone on the inbound. Thrust was discouraging the pass under the basket, but they still got it done. And the crowd right now at Alumni Hall virtually out of the ball game. 
Rust misses the long one, and back comes Sean Miller and Pitt on the attack. Brooken. Oh, he was flat on that one. Shy. Nice Good, save. There. Good hustle by Terrence Mullet. That's always a nice hustle play when you heads up enough to get it and throw it off the opposing player's legs to get possession. Well, his brother was a great one, Chris Mullen. Now a star with the Golden State Warriors. He had a lot of great games here at St. John's. You can it off to Brust. Or Dan. Overpassing. Singleton picked up the mistake, missed everything. Or Dan tried to get a hand on it. And the foul is on Rod Brookin for Pitt. Yeah, where Dan's got a good touch, I think he's got to look for that soft jumper from the foul line again to draw the defense out. Threw it to Singleton in a lot of traffic. And then didn't grab the rebound, but did draw the foul. One-point ball game, Redmond lead 26-25, 6.37 to go, first half. Where Dan seems recovered now from the calf injury, which he sustained late December in the ECAC Holiday Festival against Ohio State, running the floor very well in this one. Let's keep in mind that Pitts... Brian Shorter on the bench with three personals. Picked him up quick. He really did, and then he didn't get the third for a while, but it seemed like a matter of time. He played very aggressively out there. Mullen for three. Offensive four, Buchanan cleans up. Jason Buchanan with a second field goal. That's weak side rebounding again. Pitt has to put a body on someone. And it comes from a guard, too. 28-25, St. John's leads. Nice look out by Bobby Martin. That is a free try. Took a trip around the rim and popped out. A no look pass to Singleton from Buchanan. That's a beautiful catch by Billy Singleton. That ball was locked it out there for him, but he got it in a very quick release to finish off. Billy Singleton has six. Redman lead is five. Nice lift by Singleton off the bench in this one. A good matchup against Rod Brooken. 5.30 to go, first half. Miller's free try goes around. He's looking for it. He's right on the rim, but it's not going down for him. Buchanan, perhaps not a good choice. That was a tough one. That's a long bounce pass. Nice he's steal, though. make up for it, and he did. He's ahead of the pack, chased by Matthews. Jason Buchanan with six. He made a mistake. He made him amends for it and scored on top of it. Well, and that got the crowd into it a little bit. Great hustle by Buchanan. St. John's grinding it out right now against the man defense. The crowd is getting into the ball game here at Alumni Hall. Here's Miller again. For three. And again it goes in and out on him. Those shots are there. They're just not dropping down right now for the sophomore. He keeps looking aggressively to take it. It's a good move because St. John's is doubling up down low and he's got to loosen that defense up a bit. Here's Brian Mahoney. Luke Karnasek's line assistant. Saw Ronnie Rutledge earlier. Al Balbo. And we saw Kavanaugh come into the ball game for Pitt. Jason Buchanan for the Redmen out on the perimeter. Turnover by Jason Williams. Back comes Pitt. Trailing by seven. Pat Cavanaugh doesn't make many mistakes. He'll run the point right now. Try to free up Miller. Martin power move. Bobby Martin now has seven. We thought he had to come up big in this game. Even more riding on his shoulders right now with shorter out of the game. More bid. That's a strong move by Bobby Martin. Duke Cannon has a hot hand of late. He travels. Yeah, forced that one in a little bit, but St. John's executing very well out of their half-court set right now. Under four to play here in the first half. St. John's with the lead. We'll be back after these messages. I'm, I'm sitting there behind my desk. It's 2 o'clock Saturday morning. I look up, and the phone system's all lit up, and I call the service company. It's a recording. They only service the phone systems between nine and five weekdays. And what are you supposed to do? Close the place up and go to the beach on the weekends? Better yet, call the crooks up. Tell them to take the weekend off. On your mark, get set, go places. To all kinds of great places. 
in all parts of this great country of ours. Presenting Piedmont Airlines Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. Before Going Places Prices are going, going, gone. Well, it's been some wild action, but Billy Singleton has contributed off the bench. Fast break opportunity in St. John's. When the advantage has been there, they've gone after it. Singleton has got half a dozen off the bench. He's made a solid contribution again. And Jason Buchanan has contributed, too, offensively. He has eight, and he's just about at his average. That's Brian Shorter out of the game right now with the three personals. Got to ride it up till halftime. 3.40 to go. Gavinoff into Martin, turn around, pop, no. Oh, nice oh, rebound. rebound again by Matt Russ. <laughs> He'll come in and get it. 32-27, St. John's. 3.30 to go, first half. It's really gone with the zone in this first half. 1-2-2, two, two, particularly with Shorter out to try to get good, solid rebounding position inside. Nice steal. By Brookett. Came all the way over from the weak side. That's what you need when you're trying to front down low. Darrell Porter. Over to Kavanaugh. Nice look. chance. Porter's pass inside to Bobby Martin. Excellent. Bobby Martin has nine. Great yeah. assist. Darrell Porter, second on the team in assists. He was recruited out of high school as a wide receiver. Perry High School in Pittsburgh. Runs the floor well, and he's had a very solid first half. There you see, we have a three-point ball game. St. John's leads. Mullins keeps it alive. Singled in. Laid it up off the window. Almost looked like he lost that one going up. I think he did. <laughs> Billy Singleton with the quick release. We talked about it. he's a very smart ball player. Plays his position very well and uses his ball very well inside. Now Miller is barking signals. Brookin setting screens. Boy, Sean Miller has been right there. Just won't go for him. Brookin had a strip. The trip belongs to St. John. Mullen. Matt Kavanaugh with the foul. Forfeit. Pittsburgh foul on number 12, Matt Kavanaugh. And Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is over the middle. So, Mullen's going to go to the one and one. The first bonus opportunity for either team in this first half. And St. John still has a couple of fouls to give before Pitt goes to the line. So it's been mostly outside shooting and inside shooting. Field goal variety in this first half. St. John's only has four. Mullen, an excellent free throw shooter, as expected. He had somebody that he <laughs> learned from. That's right. Of course, he's a righty. Chris was a lefty. Great likeness. He's, of course, several inches shorter than his brother. He's a six-footer. Probably had his best games this year in the ECAC Holiday Festival where against Fordham in Ohio State. Launched some minutes and played well. So he's made 10 of 11. Got the good release. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go. St. John's leads 36-29. Pittsburgh trying to find Martin inside. They have not had much luck with the perimeter shooting, except for Porter. Miller and Kavanaugh are the guards. Buchanan came up and slapped Kavanaugh. Second foul on Jason. St. John's loves to go with that man-to-man, -man and Jason Buchanan doing a good job pressuring up top. And there's no question about it when Louie needed someone to take charge at the point. He went to the first-year man, Buchanan. He's done the job. This is Brooklyn, the outside threat. That's a three. And one that was the big toe hit the line that time. He made sure he was behind the line. He's had some big games this year off the bench, most notably the 24-point effort against Oklahoma in a run-and-gun affair, but he can shoot. He has seven right now. Most up pass intercepted. Brooklyn's having a fine ball game. Yeah, he is. St. John's is trying to force it now down low. They need to look for a little perimeter game themselves. Gavinaugh is all by himself. Not a pretty release. And St. John's and Bruss come back up. Redmen lead 36-32. Little helter-skelter at the moment. Not sure that Lou wants Oh, this. look at that rebound, though. Buchanan with a look. Jason Williams. And Jason Williams going to go up the line. Somehow Singleton comes up with that ball after a four shot inside that makes a great dump off in the middle. It looks like Brooklyn almost loses it to Bobby Martin. And how about that pass? Bob Williams could have pulled up and taken the shot. He nearly charged on that play. Look at Louie. <laughs> He's working it. 
Lou's looking for his 453rd coaching win at St. John's. Oh, what numbers? 21st year. All and time. there's one of the better, I think, unknown players, Ron Perry, Jason Williams. I'd agree with you. He's having an outstanding season, very quietly. Up until the Georgetown game where he got into the altercation through the punch. You know, he's really had a great year for St. John's. He doesn't make too many mistakes when he gets the ball down on that post, as evidenced by that high field goal shooting percentage. That's for sure. 36-32, St. John's. Williams has eight, looking for nine. Ooh. Got it. Down to the final minute and ten seconds, first half. Pitt. Slow tempo. Big East freshman of the year last year. Miller delivers it over to Jason Matthews. We thought tempo was important. St. John's has slowed it down half-court style. Look at that hustle by Mullen. Mullen, wow. Looking got it back. He turned the mistake into two points. You'll take a good lucky bounce any time, and that's what Pitt got right there. Uh, Brooken has nine. He and Bobby Martin, the leading Pitt scorers, with nine apiece. Frank, if you shoot the ball well and if you rebound, you can control tempo, and that's what St. John's has been doing in this first half. They're walking it up right now. They lead by three. Malik Seeley not playing tonight with the injured right ankle. This place was taken in the starting lineup by Barry Millaven, who was checked back into the lineup. Russell just hold it out there. There's 21 left with 16 on the shot clock. So you've got a three-second differential. And St. John's can hold it as long as the defensive player is not within six feet of him. There's the shot clock down on the left. Another chance, singled in, doubled. He walked, turned the ball over with six seconds remaining. It's enough time to dribble the ball up court for Pitt and to get a high percentage shot off. They should try to get it in the hands of Sean Miller. If he does not have the long shot, he'll be looking to distribute, but there's enough time to get a good one. Got to push it. Morel Porter, three seconds. We'll count if it goes. Short. That's it at the end of the first half of play here at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University. St. John's now with a three-point lead running 37 to 34. They jumped out aggressively, did a good job. Brian Shorter will be back, though, in the second half. He had the three. We'll be back with more right after these messages from your local station. Nissan wants you to succeed in business. So let's define the following business terms. Conference room. Executive decision making. Client entertainment. Risk management. Hostile takeover. This real world business course was brought to you by Maxima. The four door sports car. Bow, 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 matchmaker, matchmaker, this is no fun. Bow, 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 Send me somewhere, I need the sun. Bow, 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 matchmaker, matchmaker, I've got the tent. I'm ready to fish, I got folks to rent. The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages gives you the most ads and the most choices. No wonder it's the most used book around. Show us some sights, three days, two nights. Make me a perfect match. The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages, no other book can match it. There's something quite exhilarating about Pepsi. The Pepsi Special Edition Pontiac Grand Prix SE. One of over 200 we're giving away in the tasty excitement sweepstakes. Enter now, before it's gone. Visit the specially marked Pepsi displays at your participating ShopRite store for your chance to win one of 10 Pontiac Grand Prix SEs in the Pepsi Tasty Excitement Sweepstakes. Listen to Z100 for details. I'm Cy Sperling, president of the Hair Club for Men. And these are just a few of the men who called our toll-free number for our booklet about thinning hair. This is the booklet that tells you what you need to know about every hair replacement method available. It discusses everything from toupees and wigs to transplants and weaves. And it even has a section on the realities and misconceptions of minoxidil. Just call our toll-free number now, and I'll send you our new updated edition, which includes a whole new series of before and after photos like these. These men are actual clients and not models. They're men like you who discovered that you don't need drugs or chemicals, surgery or miracles to have a full head of hair. To get all the facts free and without obligation, just call our toll-free number now and I'll send you the new booklet. And remember, I'm not only the hair club president, 
but I'm also a client. You gotta look at any conference in America for 88, 89. You'd have to say the Big East had the best recruiting class in the nation coming in from top to bottom. You look at every school out there is getting a player that maybe can be sort of an impact player that can step in immediately and help. And the 88 class out of high school, to me, is the greatest class ever assembled. The main entree in this Big East freshman feast is Georgetown's Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning? I mean, it's early, but I mean, we happened to catch his first Big East game, a road game, 19,700 people against a senior front court, you know what I mean, which is a pretty tough assignment, and he was the dominant player in the game. So, I mean, to me, it's scary what the rest of Alonzo Mourning's career is going to be like. I think he's the best freshman in the country by far. Right behind Mourning is Syracuse's Billy Owens, who is second on the Orangemen in steals and rebounds. You know, he fits into the category one could be one of the great ones uh, that word maybe is sometimes overused but he certainly has a chance with uh, having the opportunity to play early at Syracuse the fact that he is highly skilled you know I'm, I think he'll he'll just keep getting better and better while Morning and Owens have garnered much of the early attention St. John's has a trio of freshmen who have been forced into the spotlight and they've responded start with the center and I'm talking about uh, Robert Wardan I know he's big, but I think what's very, very good about him is that he's very flexible. He can handle the ball, he can move, and he feels the game well. And as he gets stronger, he's going to be a force in a pivot. Malik, when we talk about Malik, you're talking about almost a complete player. Even at this early stage, he sees the game from the uh, forward spot. He can handle it in the backcourt. He can drive, he's working on his jumper, and he makes the other guys better. The little kid, Jason Buchanan, we're very happy. I know, you start to smile about him. I think uh, in an open field, he's very, very, very entertaining and exciting. He's working on his shot, and when he gets his strength, he'll be a big, big con contributing factor to our program. Another freshman who is adjusting quickly to life in the Big East is Villanova's Mark Dowdell. The Howell, New Jersey native has become the Cats' sixth man and is getting over 20 minutes of playing time per game. Connecticut guard Chris Smith has been hampered by a nagging ankle injury, but when healthy, he has been a major contributor to the Husky attack. At Boston College, high-scoring guard Brian Edwards got off to a slow start, but his return to form should give the Eagle offense a much-needed boost. Defensively, Georgetown's Dikembe Mutombo has been a tremendous force on the inside, and his 12 blocks against St. John's broke Patrick Ewing's conference record. Time. We are at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University. And right now, the Redmen of St. John's have that three-point lead. We'll be back right after these messages from your local stations. We asked Saab 9000 CD owners about its road holding. It's quiet. It's luxury. How it looks, and the way it makes them feel. But why ask? The car says it all. Buy or lease one of the most intelligent cars ever built at your local Saab dealers today. When the chairman of Marriott checks out a new hotel, how does he check in at home? AT&T. To get home from more phones worldwide, make sure you hear... Thank you for using AT&T. How does a CFO of Porsche stay ahead of the competition? AT&T. For the highest performance long distance service, make sure you hear... Thank you for using AT&T. Heavy hitter from field operations takes over, wants to move us into the Fortune 100. Tough guy. He wants to look at MIS. How many computers? How many dollars? What's the return? So I show him what we're doing with Wang. Voice response for order status. Wang integrated imaging for customer service. Field to home office integration. Numbers from the field come into the mainframe the second the books close. Consolidated financials go back to the field by the third of the month. His jaw drops. He says, well, he didn't say anything really. He just pissed it. Emergency like this just can't wait. Getting here quickly means having breaks I can depend on. People are depending on me. Family depends on me, too. 
That's why I need brakes I can count on. So I count on Meineke. At Meineke, we do brakes, and we do them right. We analyze the whole system, pinpoint the problem, and fix it, period. I don't ever want to worry about my brakes. With Meineke, I don't. If you've been waiting for the deal of the decade, your time has come. Because you can save up to 70% on everything at Crazy Eddie during his first time ever red tag sale. You don't have to shop around for specially priced merchandise because everything at Crazy Eddie is specially priced. Camcorders, VCRs, stereo rack systems, telephones, computers, CD players, they're all on sale now during Crazy Eddie's first time ever red tag sale. Crazy Eddie with savings up to 70%. His prices really are insane. Here at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University, Frank Daly along with Ron Perry. And we've had a pretty exciting first half of Big East basketball here as the Redmen of St. John's now lead 37-34 over the Pitt Panthers. Quick observation on that first half run. Well, it was the tempo that St. John's wanted to play. They slowed it down, they got the lead, and they were able to walk the ball up the court, and I thought they were more aggressive during the first 20 minutes. How about our Dodge Player of the Week, Player of the Game, whatever. Sherman Douglas did it all <laughs> over the weekend, didn't he? Yeah, I happened to be there and witness it, but Sherman Douglas with 22 assists against Providence in an up-tempo 196 win at the Carrier Dome set a Big East record and broke and tied an NCAA record. I've never seen so many alley-oops converted to dunks as I did in that one. And we were fortunate enough to see a gentleman from Georgetown become the Plymouth Rookie of the Week. And there he is, Mutombo. What a ball game he had, swatting balls around all night. It's not often that you see a player take a game over inside, particularly blocking shots, but he had a dozen of them for a Big East and Georgetown record. And what a force he can be down low defensively. And Jack Kelly, you see there on the left, along with St. John's Jason Williams. Jack is from the Chrysler Plymouth Corporation, and Jason Williams picked himself up a little bit of an award for his efforts. A couple of weeks ago, Jason's been very consistent, posted the numbers, and he got the award before this ball game. Ron Perry, let's look at some weekend results around the Big East. First of all, Seton Hall, they continue to pile up impressive numbers. Yeah, they were a little bit too strong inside for BC in that one. Dana Barros, a lot rides on his shoulders, but the Hall very effective so far in Connecticut. The big win with the second half run against the Jason Williams-less St. John's Club. And uh, Syracuse, they had their hands full as they took on Providence over the weekend in a ball game you did. Look at those numbers. Yeah, it was an up-tempo affair in Villanova. Some key baskets down the stretch. Walker, the freshman, made the big one for the one-point win. Do any of the standings still surprise you at all, Ron? Well, you still see Providence up there in the three slot. Pittsburgh and St. John's with a win in this one, though. They continue to nudge their way up from the middle of the pack toward the top. They want it to move up in the standings. It's going to be a busy week in the Big East. On Wednesday, Providence will be at St. John's, and that'll be an interesting matchup. Seton Hall and Georgetown, Ron. That sure will be. Villanova, Syracuse, these are all good games. A lot of balance once again in the league from top to bottom. Anyone seems to be able to beat anyone as you look at the upcoming events. Full slate of games coming up on the weekend, and uh, Georgetown and Villanova is always a good offering, and that'll be the Sunday loan game in the Big East. So we are here at uh, St. John's University at Alumni Hall, and uh, Malik Seely is a player who is injured right now. What effect might he have had in that first half? Well, he would have had a big one, but he's out of there, and Brian Shorter had the three fouls. He'll be back. The Red Men, by three, will be back after these local messages. Matchmaker, matchmaker, it's a surprise. They'll cook the food so she won't get wise. Matchmaker, matchmaker, I need a man. Yeah. How about the trio grand? The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages gives you the most ads and the most choices. No wonder it's the most used book around. Make me a perfect match. The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. These days, there's something quite exhilarating about Pepsi. The Pepsi Special Edition Pontiac Grand Prix SE. One of over 200 we're giving away in the tasty excitement sweepstakes. Enter now before it's gone. Visit the specially marked Pepsi displays at your participating AMP store for your chance to win one of 10 Pontiac Grand Prix SEs in the Pepsi Tasty Excitement Sweepstakes. Listen to Z100 for details. Even when I'm not at Newmark and Lewis, I'm watching. But I also want you to know I'm listening. 
When my salespeople tell me what you want, I listen. When you tell me you need something special, something new, I listen. So sure, I'm watching, but I'm listening too. And that makes Newmark and Lewis even better. Lewis is watching. Ronald Lauder will be the change New York needs. Ronald Lauder backs the death penalty in mandatory life jail terms for those who push drugs on children. Ronald Lauder backs tuition tax credits for low- and middle-income parents with children in parochial or private schools. Ronald Lauder backs tough ethics in government laws because as a businessman, Ronald Lauder knows New York can run without corruption, fraud, and cronyism. Ronald Lauder, a great new mayor for a great new New York City. second half of Big East basketball is brought to you by U.S. Air. U.S. Air warms up your winter with flights to Florida, Arizona, and California by your local Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers. By Reebok basketball shoes. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Real life, real answers. The Big East basketball is sponsored by your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Saab dealer. And by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Thirty-seven to thirty-four is the count, and the Redmen of St. John's have that three-point lead right now. When you look at the numbers statistically, Ronnie, the thing that really jumps out at you is that uh, St. John's right now has had a pretty good edge, almost two to one as far as rebounding is concerned. Yeah, and that's a sign of aggressiveness, and I thought the loose balls belonged to St. John's in the first half. They really hit the boards with aggression. Seven offensive rebounds to four for Pittsburgh out of that, out of those rebound totals, and again, a sign of hustle that helped them to control the tempo and advantage from the foul line, and three-point field goals. Pitt has gone to the long one, but has not delivered if they had they probably find themselves in the lead in this first half, but St. John's got the missed opportunities. Let's take a look now at the scoring as far as the front court and the back court is concerned. And, and there you see, well, the bench really has not been significant so far, but uh, the front court is getting the points. That's right, and we thought it would be a game that would be played in the paint. It has been. Advantage to fit there, even with Shorter going out for the latter stages of that first half with three. But how about the St. John's backcourt? Bench is really neutralized. Buchanan with a solid eight-point first half for the Redmen. As far as Pittsburgh's individual scoring is concerned, Martin and Brooken both with nine. They lead the way. Shorter and Porter check in with six. And uh, Miller and Matthews, not a whole lot of offensive production there. Yeah, that's the surprising number to see. That backcourt duo with just four points between them struggling from the outside. Well defended by St. John's. They got a hand up on them. And Jason Williams again there. Buchanan with a solid effort. Singleton and uh, I thought Brooken neutralized each other. But good contributions from a lot of people in that first half for the Redmen. Well, all those numbers add up to a St. John's three-point lead at 37 to 34. Pittsburgh trying to even up their Big East mark at four and four. They're three and four right now. And Luke Carnesecca and the Redmen are at four and four. All right, Red, let's go, Let's Redmen. set the second half lineup square for St. John's. Brust is in the ballgame. Jason Buchanan. Robert Wardan. Barry Millhaven and Jason Williams. And Pitt right now going with Sean Miller. There you saw. Uh, Brooken's going to start. Usually he is a sixth man for Paul Evans, but he's going to start the second half. Darrell Porter into the ball game. Bobby Martin, Brian Shorter. Shorter, keep in mind, got three fouls in that first half and got him rather early. Paul Evans trying to go with a little bigger lineup to get a better job done off the board. That's why he's got Brooken out there. Matthews quiet in the first half. Porter with a 16 footer. He has eight, averaging 8.1 per game. So offensively, he is at his average. He's been really the best guy for the, from the perimeter for Pitt in this one, which is a good sign as they try to get some balance between the inside and outside game. Pitt in the 2-3 zone to start things off. For Dan, the look intended for Jason Williams. St. John ball. 
Three personals on that man, double zero, Brian Shorter. He's got to make it through the first few minutes of the second half, in my opinion, to get into the flow. Otherwise, sometimes you get into foul trouble. It's hard to get out of that foul trouble all night. Jason Williams. And that's offensive. Ball's going to turn around. Well, it seems like a, a veteran ball player rises to the floor every year, and it's been Jason Williams, but that time, excellent defensive position. Williams on the charge. And Pitt will bring it up here at Alumni Hall, trailing by one. Good ball game, 37-36. St. John's leads by one. One minute gone by here in the second half. Really turned into kind of a chess match. Both teams trying to execute out of the half-court set. And neither team's been particularly sharp in the half court, but the advantage to St. John's off the boards, I think, has really helped them to gain the advantage at this point. All sophomores in that lineup for Pitt, with the exception of Brooken. Nice catch. Shorter. Short pop. No offensive board. Brooken. Got it. Got it. Oh, he got a little body English. He showed some emotion. Rod Brooken, who's been effective from the outside, did some damage inside. His play's improved this year. Number one off the bench, and number two, he's really shed some weight. He reported overweight this year at the beginning of the year. As the season's gone on, played much better. Likes those results. There you see Millhaven with a hand on Brooken, and Brooken will try to make it a three-point play. The old-fashioned way. He has 11. At that time, St. John's will come back up as Pitt has the lead now by one at 38-37, and the crowd getting a little bit restless here at Alumni Hall. Yeah, they haven't gotten too into this ball game. A little emotion in the first half with a couple of exciting plays. Billy Singleton, the catalyst for some of that. I look for him fairly early in this second half. Rust for three, perfect. That Rust has eight. The average is 12.2, and there's Sean Miller quickly up for Pitt. Darrell Porter can connect shorter offensive board, second chance hit. Where Dan had a hand there, looks like almost a clean block. That's what the fans thought, but he'll get hit with a foul. I think the fans' reaction was that it was kind of a late whistle. And it was called by the outside official. It did look like a lot of, a lot of body contact. Yeah, he got the hand. Yeah, I think he did hit him. And the complaint, I think, by Paul Evans was that the call didn't come from under the basket. It came from the wing area to send shorter to the line. So the sophomore out of Philly gets a chance at the free throw line. He's going to shoot two. A fair free throw shooter, almost 70%. He has seven at this juncture. Simon Gratz High School out of Philadelphia. We've mentioned it before, but had he played his senior year there, he would have pretty assuredly broken the Wilts all-time high school scoring record. Ryan Shorter leaves the line with eight, averaging 18.9 per ball game, tied at 40, St. John's in pit. He's trying to extend pressure a little bit. It's just extending the backboard people out of the 2-3 set. Sometimes that'll get a team into the game a little bit more aggressively. Nice. Oh. spin move and connects. Oh. Beautiful. Robert Ordan. Kind of a 360 job inside. Coming down the other way, Shorter blocking for Oh, my. What a risk by... Shorter on that one. He went playing with three fouls. Full barrel. Wound up from about 20. That had to give Paul Evans a little bit of a shakeup on the sideline. It's also where Dan's third. I mean, it's definitely deep breath time, but how about Robert Ward? Dan? Yeah. Spin move time. He's agile for a big man. But he came back down the other way and committed the foul. And Shorter is at the free throw line again. Paid the price, too. Three personals on Bourdain. Perfect. He has another chance. Shorter had a great game earlier in the year. He's had a lot of very, very good ones, but against Northwestern, pulled down 20 rebounds and had 26 points. Those are impressive numbers. He'll score and he'll rebound. Pitt's going to reload off the missed free throw. Brooklyn by himself. 4-3. Oh. Pitt just hasn't been able to get that long-range shot going. Unofficially, that's one for ten in the game. They have an advantage from that area coming in, but St. John's has been more effective from three-point land. You get in spun, took the shot, not the quarter back up the other way. Brookin ran the baseline and softly laid it off of the glass. Ron Brookin now has 13, and Pitt regains the lead by one at 43-42. 17-13 remaining in the game. Credit to Darrell Porter for running a classic fast break. Matt Brust, that's a three-try, lipped away. 
And again, Porter runs the break, but fit up into the front. Look at it. No, he is not shy. He's hungry, some would say. And another chance there by Shorter. The fans think he stepped on the side. Offensive. Oh, he should have come chances. down with it. Nothing came down for Pitt. Uh, Shorter should have come down and powered it back up. It looked so easy. He tried to finish right off, and Louie wants to talk it over. We got a break in the action. 16 42 to go in this ballgame. Pitt now leads by one. We'll be back after these messages. You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 130 Days Inn owners right here in the Big East Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. A drive to the sun with the most features under the sun. Oh, wow. Introducing the new Plymouth Sundance with 47 standard features, prices starting at 88.20. Best value in its class and backed by 770 protection. The Plymouth Sundance proves yet again the nine most important words Plymouth knows. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. See your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Flights to 14 Florida cities and the Bahamas. Piedmont can change all your ideas about winter. The Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Well, here at Alumni Hall in the Big East, Pitt leads by one, 43-42, 16-42 to go. What do you suspect that Lou Karnasek was talking about in that timeout, Ron? Well, he's not happy with the way St. John's came out. Not like the beginning of the game where they really went at the boards with aggression. It's been Pitt to start off the second half, and Pitt has already forced St. John into 14 fouls. So he just wanted to say, hey, let's go after a little bit more, guys. Offensive move by Jason Williams. No, or Dan couldn't get the basket, but he got the foul. He'll right. go to the line. And right away, if that was his advice, look at St. John's doing what they did early in this game, grabbing a couple of offensive boards. This is good cutting action inside where Dan getting the good position. Look at the way he boxes Martin now with his strength. That's the way you get it done off the offensive board. He's had a, some, somewhat of a lid on the basket in this one. Look at Buchanan hustling in there though. Knifing his way. That's just not grabbing the ball by Pitt, although Miller gives it his best effort. Shorter has gone out of the game for Pitt. Brooklyn has come in to St. John Bull. All right, we're set now. Shot clock got reset. Jason Williams. Martin playing a little soft because of the foul situation. We're down with the hoop. That's some kind of tip in by the big guy. Went to his left hand, banked it home. Martin against Wardan. Ball outside on Wardan before the shot. And that's his fourth. And that will cause some concern for Carter's second. That means Singleton should check into the lineup, and Wardan will sit down with four. That's a good call. Singleton, he's a solid player. I thought Wardan's had some good minutes on the floor. Certainly from a positive standpoint, has run the floor very well, but has really committed a couple of freshman fouls in this game. Not really necessary. And Brian Shorter been in foul trouble in this ball game. He's got three right now, but Paul Evans wanted to talk it over with him on the bench. I'm sure it'll be a brief stint. Miller out on the perimeter of that zone. Singleton works defensively against Brook and Brook and outside set the screen. The story right now started to turn out to be Miller and Matthews. Just four points between them from the outside. Normally very accurate. That That's was deflected. Well, deflected by yeah. Buchanan. Good call. It was deflected by St. John. Miller can go back and get it. Martin tried to power his way. Singleton got a hand on it. Buchanan comes up with the loose ball. Chased by Brook 
Great quickness and body control by Buchanan. He's having a ball game. He's got 11. His average is 8.4. Solid effort. 50, 43, Redmond. 13, 48 remaining. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. We asked Saab 900 turbo drivers to describe their car's performance. Woo! The way it's built. <laughs> it's comfort. <sighs> Roominess. And how they feel about their choice. <laughs> but why ask? The car speaks for itself. Buy or lease one of the most intelligent cars ever built at your local Saab dealers today. Computer companies, software companies, they're a dime a dozen. You got it. Telephone companies, there must be a thousand of them. True. So why is it always nine at? Okay, you want a dozen brands of software and computers? Plus, Stop, please. Plus a hundred years of telephone experience in one company? Yeah, yeah. That's 9X. So without 9X, I suppose hell would freeze over? Need to communicate. St. John's leading here at home at Alumni Hall, 50 to 43. I'm Frank Daly alongside Ron Perry. You know, Ron, these teams, when you look at them, to me, have similarities. Yeah, they really do. I mean, neither team is particularly deep. They can't go eight, nine, ten players into their bench. They've had some key losses um, from last season. They both like to dump it inside. They're yep. going hard at each other inside in this one. And surprisingly, an advantage in the backcourt for St. John's in this game. Uh, Jason Buchanan's played very well. Pitt struggling shooting the ball in this one, particularly between Matthews and Miller. Terrell Porter's shot won't fall down. St. John's. Terrell by Williams. St. John's has done a great job off the board. That's, That's a wobble block. by Buchanan. Yeah, we both make, make it single. <laughs> we both had that one. <laughs> I think Lou knew it. Just to say, get the suitcase out. We're walking and traveling big time on that one. Pittsburgh will come back up here in New York. 50-43. St. John's with the lead and the turnovers in favor of Pitt. I don't think Pitt's really taking advantage of those turnovers, though. They haven't been able to get their running game going. St. John's controlling this game half-court style. Don Miller post up down to Martin. He's guarded by Jason Williams. Quickly it goes into Buchanan. Before he took the shot, Singleton fouled him. Really a good matchup. Singleton and... Rod Brook, and I think Singleton, a stronger player inside. He's got the bulk, and Brooken does a better job shooting the perimeter, but good matchup. Shorter comes into the game, and Bobby Martin sits down. So Pitt is working with Porter, Sean Miller, as, uh, or Dan, or St. John's, in some foul trouble. Porter, no, he reloads. Brooken. Jason Matthews for three. Now that's what Paul Evans has been waiting for. Matthews is really struggling the last couple of games. Didn't shoot it well at Villanova at the DuPont Pavilion, but Miller and Matthews can get it going from the outside. They need to hit a few of those. He has five. Buchanan works with Frost. Also in the game, Millhaven. Nice block. And inside, Jason oh. Williams. And Singleton will also work for St. John's. Right now, Jason Williams has 13. That is team high for the Redmen. 52-46, St. John's. It showed a little man-to-man -man that time. Darrell Porter with a great singular effort against Matty Brush. Jason Williams for the personal. Jason coming off that one-game suspension after that little altercation. The brouhaha against St. John's and John Turner. And he's looked effective here tonight. He didn't play in that Connecticut game over the weekend. Millhaven leads. His presence was really felt, too, as St. John's fell by 28 to the Connecticut Huskies. And that was a Big East rule, by the way, the fighting in the one-game suspension for Jason Williams. Millhaven was replaced by Mullet. The NCAA rules now take over. If Williams is to get in another altercation, the second fight for NCAA rules is a one-game suspension. If it ever happens a third time, on for the season. Leading rebounder is Jason Williams. He's having his way on the boards. He has 10. Sean Miller, the personal, his first. Rode him defensively. Rode him hard. Crowd was right on that call. 
I think what Pitt needs right now, and they're trying to get, is some more intensity on the defensive end. They've been sitting in a passive 2-3 zone. They're making an adjustment to man right here to try to get themselves going more offensively. St. John's lead is six. Matthews tries the steal, and he does. Well, that's a two-shotter, too. Great hustle. Terrence Mullen with the personal. Takes out a cameraman who stays with the shot. Great effort. Unfortunately, Jason Matthews, okay. That was a fine anticipation. That's always a dangerous pass. The long law pass on the inbounds play. And what a hack there by Mullen. Doesn't want to give up the easy one, that's for sure. Matthews goes to the free throw line. Yes. He got all the yeah. arm. Oh, yeah. Who says this isn't a physical game for everybody out there? <laughs> Cameraman took the offensive. Jason Matthews has another one coming. He has six. His average is 16.2, so sophomore out of L.A. has been a little bit quiet. Knocked down two there. Ah, there's the full court pressure now by Pitt. one 2 one, one style with the trap. Four-point ball game. Redman lead. Terrence Mullen. A look. Come out. Uh, Jason Williams, who has 15. Well, when a team presses you, that should really put the lights on to say, let's go get it. Mullen running the fast break to perfection. Lead back to six for St. John. That's okay, though, for Pitt, though, because that might get the tempo of this thing picked up a little bit. And even though they give up an easy one, they want to get out and run some more. Nice hustle. Terrence Mullen is not afraid to get on the floor. He's wincing a little bit after that one. St. John Ball. Not the floor burn, that's for sure. Great hustle. We'll do that once again. He's getting some quality minutes here. Yeah, he is. With Sealy out of the lineup, Louis trying a lot of different combinations. He went down hard after that one. Kind of a la Matt Brust, who's right by his side. Hit with the ball. Malik Sealy out there, the fine freshman forward. Louis gone a little bit more with Barry Milhave and Terrence Mullen in this one. He got some good minutes. Porter, a little push. No, shorter offensive. Another chance. Got it. And he was fouled for the chance for a three-point play. Porter is so strong, shorter, I should say, and he can go up and get the offensive boards and strong enough to finish off. Billy Singleton's got to drive him out a bit more. And that's a nice rebounding effort and a follow-through. And, yeah, shorter enjoyed that one. Good effort. Billy Singleton picks up the personal foul. 54 to 50, St. John's with the lead. Make that a three-point lead now after the free throw. Hit with the full court pressure. Rod Brooken with his back to the man taking it out of bounds. Kind of unusual. 11 minutes and five seconds to go in this game. Terrence Mullen. I think it's a good strategy by Paul Evans to try to extend this game a little bit right now. He's got a pretty quick lineup on the floor, particularly with Matthews and Porter in the backcourt. Jason Williams high. Run by Martin. That's for two. He wants three, but he'll get two. 17 now for Jason Williams. Yeah, he's doing it from the inside and out. That's a solid one. Five-point lead for the Redmen. Ball comes back to St. John's. Quarter against Buchanan. Pitt is extending their guards out on the floor now. Yeah, they're man-to-man -man in the half-court set, but St. John's has really been in the driver's seat in this one. Setting when they don't have the break and running it with, with it when they do. Singleton kicked it off to Brust. He missed the three. Singleton pushes his way up and in. Oh, that's using the strength. Billy Singleton has 10. His average is 8.8. Oh, he is a strong one. Thought he might get an offensive right away. He uses the right arm a little bit right there. Not enough, though, to... Gained too much of an advantage, but shorter with the three fouls will just cave way. Jason Matthews is out for Pitt. Rod Brooklyn comes into the game. Kavanaugh into the ball game now for Pitt as well. Sean Miller is down. Pitt not in any kind of half court sink right now. They're not executing. Martin against Williams in and out. Good play by Singleton. And using the body. Mullen pulls up. Short. Matt Brock took about five people with him. <laughs> <laughs> he is so aggressive. He's not going to argue that at all, is he? Uh, he hasn't touched the ball much in this game. That might have been a semi-frustration foul. But he's always going 
You hear 110%, 115%. This kid, he definitely does put it in high gear a lot. Well, when you watch him play, you know that he's played some football. You know, he's a great guy to have on the team. He, he really picks up the level of play of his teammates, most times defensively. So Porter is going to shoot one and one. In and out for Durrell on the first one. No second chance. 9.40 to go. 58-51, St. John's with the lead. And the ball. Mullen has it. Nice pass. Shorter stepped in and picked up the mistake. That's the thing. When you front defensively down low, you've got to get the weak side help. Shorter right by Mullen. Scoop good. Oh, that was some kind of quick move. The fans wanted a walk on that one. Just a very quick move by the big man. Ryan has 13 points. 58-53, St. John's. About nine minutes remaining in the contest. That thrust on the outside, run by Brooklyn. Martin and Jason Williams really having it. Oh, that's a foul. Jason just takes Bobby Martin out. A little bit of acting by Martin. That's the fourth on Jason Williams. I thought Williams should have gotten the ball on his initial cut down low. Didn't get it. He might have been a little frustrated with that personal. Jason Williams is down. Robert Ordan comes in. Sean Miller has checked into the game, and Kavanaugh leaves for fit. Martin at the free throw line. Try to bring the Panthers closer, and he does to within three. A couple of free throws there for the sophomore, and he has 12 points. Now Pitt's making a little bit of a move here on St. John's, and much more aggressive in this man-to-man -man defense. They've been extending it, forcing St. John's to penetrate inside. Let's try to post up Brookings. Good swing pass, Mullen. A little bit of a lane. Buchanan. Oh. Buchanan again. Oh, he's got him. Inside, the little guy. 13 points for Jason Buchanan. I mean, that's got to be Pitt kind of watching a little bit to see if Buchanan get a second and third effort in there. 60 to 55. Pitt with the ball, Pitt trend. He just ball and Buchanan combinations look pretty good. Shorter against Singleton. Singleton will get the foul, and he paid for it. Yeah, he got a mouthful on that one. He gives the position, though, inside the shorter. Awfully tough to defend him when that happens. Oh, yeah, on the way down. Yeah, after the foul, though, shorter caught him on the way down. Billy is okay. He'll stay in the ball game. And shorter again at the free throw stripe. He has 13 this game. He has another one coming. Yeah, Paul Evans really felt that the free throws were critical in the Villanova one-point loss on Saturday. There weren't much of a factor in the first half in this game, but Pitt's starting to miss a few. Shorter makes it a four-point ball game. St. John's with the lead. Pitt was just one for two from the line in the first half, while St. John's was five for six. It was a pretty cleanly played first half. John's going with Buchanan and Mullen in the backcourt. Verdan is up front along with Rust. Nice move. And Singleton. Nothing there for Rust. And here's Mullen. Yeah, Will Dan really drilled that one off the board. From deep in the corner, Darrell Porter shot won't get out. Another rebound by Singleton. On the run, Buchanan back is Miller. Miller with a foul. Now, Buchanan's had a solid game. He's made good decisions with the ball. That time, he didn't force a pass over on his right to Terrence Mullen, who's really feeling hard. So, Brooken checks out of the ball game for Pitt. And Jason Matthews is in. There's another Jason. Buchanan for St. John. Well above his average, he has 14. 
Normally gets about eight, maybe nine a game. Played a good, solid four games, too. He had 10 turnovers Saturday against UConn. Not doing it tonight. 62-56, St. John's. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. When the president of Walt Disney World goes around the world, how does he get back to Main Street, USA? AT&T. For easy access to our operators from overseas, make sure you hear. AT&T USA Direct, may I help you? When the chairman of Marriott checks out a new hotel, how does he check in at home? AT&T. To get home for more phones worldwide, make sure you hear. Thank you for using AT&T. Enter a forbidden world. Where do you learn these wicked things? A world we never see. If she wasn't enjoying it, why didn't she cry for help? You get pleasure from hurting kids. I'm gonna put you out of business. We're all upset with demons. And every obsession <laughs> explodes into violence. We have to work outside the system. Charles Bronson. That's justice. Kim Jate, Forbidden Subjects, rated R. Kim Jate starts Friday at a theater near you. 62-56, St. John's leads, and right now the Redmen have that advantage, partly because Jason Williams is playing his game, powering the ball inside run. Yeah, and I think the closer this thing is down the stretch, Jason is the go-to guy, and he really does have to just get it and be smooth the way he has been. And for Pitt, struggling in this one from the outside early was Sean Miller. We said coming in, he's made more three-pointers than the whole St. John's team. He really was right on the rim. It wouldn't go for him, but down the stretch, he could be a key guy from the perimeter if Pitt can pull this one out at Alumni Hall. John Miller doesn't have a three tonight. He only has a two. Just that time. Martin, second chance. Bobby yeah. Martin has 15. What happens to Sean Miller is some of those don't go. What he's got to learn to do is get it to the goal once in a while because he's a dead eye from the foul line shooting better than 90%. John and Miller is really missing his shots. Two of 14. Pitt struggling shooting the ball in his second half. Good look by Brust into Singleton. He was doubled. And he was fouled by Jason Matthews. Kind of a sandwich move by Pitt. Jason doesn't think he got him on that play, but a little body action. Paul Evans and his Pitt crew and Lou Karnas second. As we said, they had won five straight on two different occasions. So you're really not sure which club is going to show up. And that really goes for Pitt as well. Yeah, the teams have had big wins, but they've had some disappointing defeats, too. Well, you had mentioned the similarities, Frank, and another thing that tends to happen when you have a lot of young people you're counting on. And both coaches have got to go with the youth movement this year. Singleton is three points over his eight points per game average. And Louis had to go with three freshmen a lot with Werdan, Seeley, and Buchanan at the point, and Paul Evans starts five sophomores, so a lot of young players. Good ones, too. Billy Singleton leaves the line with 12, and St. John's lead is 64 to 58. Pitt upsetting three top 10 teams earlier this year, Syracuse, Oklahoma, and Seton Hall in that order. They have their hands full here tonight. But finally, Sean Miller hits the three. Well, we thought that would be important. Credit Miller. I don't think a year ago he would have kept taking a shot like this, but his rhythms look good. It just hasn't gone down for him. Got to keep shooting to get out of it. Nice catch by Werdan. Terrence Mullen is fouled by Bobby Martin. Fourth one on Bobby Martin. Mullen going at it. A lot of ball by Martin. He wasn't happy, but he did crash into Terrence Mullen as he was going for the rejection. Rod Brookins going to get some more time, and Martin with four personals lead. I think it'll only be probably a minute to a minute and a half rest for Martin. He'll be back in. Bring him probably in at about the four-minute mark. Maybe the five-minute mark. He just sits him down briefly. And Mullen was kind of backpedaling on that one. Got the good follow-through from the line. He's got what we call the dead fish follow-through, and he gets great rotation on the ball. After he lets it go. Made one of two. Holds that right hand up for the ball. The three points for Mullen come from the free throw line. 65-61, St. John. 6.23 remaining in the game. Miller 
along to Matthews. Now the good look. Hit back for finally getting into sync a little bit out there with a couple of field goals. Quietly now, it's a two-point ball game, Ronnie. And I really credit Pitt with this mini surge to close the gap with the work they've done on the defensive end, particularly the man-to-man. -man. They showed patience. Jason Buchanan against Sean Miller. Russ gets the pass from Mullen, missed the left-hand bank try. Did everything right, but followed through with the make, and that gives Pitt a rare semi-break opportunity. Miller pulled up for three. Defensive board were down. Little quick with that one, Sean. Matthews is back. Little too cute by Terrence Monk. It'll be a St. John ball. Very close. I thought it might have ticked off Matt Frost's fingertips. Tough to see. It'll stay St. John's way, though. And they will call time. 5.37 to go in this game, 65-63. St. John's will be back after this. Hey, you talk about playground legends. You gotta bring up a guy named Lamar Mundane. I seen him just rain jump shots on people. Four, five, six shots in a row. People just started calling him money. Because <laughs> when he shot, it was money in the bank. He come down and shoot a 15-footer, everybody on the side be hollering, man. Slam dunks are tough, but when a 35-footer come raining out the sky, it'll wire you up. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. If you're planning a vacation this winter, U.S. Air has some good news and some bad news. The good news is U.S. Air has low fares on lots of departures to sunny Florida. Arizona and California. The bad news is our low fares are round trip. The timeout situation is this. There you see Pitt trailing by two. Each club has two timeouts remaining. And the ball right now belongs to St. John's. And they've got the possession arrow, so if there's a tie-up, it'll go back to St. John's. Both teams are in the bonus situation, Frank, so free throws will be critical down the stretch as well. But I think St. John's is going to try to find, you know, their big people inside if the opportunity is there. Jason Williams not on the floor right now for St. John's. Lawrence Mullen takes a chance with the wood. Oh, my! Nice drive. Mullen's getting some minutes, and he is not doing a bad job. He has five. Hasn't been bashful, and that's the most important thing. He's going right in there with the big trees inside. Shorter mishandled the ball. He's he again. Got it up ahead there with Mullen. Oh, he missed it. Got to use the glass on that when you try to go right down the middle when you're six feet. Doesn't always work. <laughs> Blue card second. Scans his bench. Uh, Mullen picked up the foul. Five minutes and three seconds to go, and Darrell Porter's at the free throw line for Pitt. Perfect. First points in the second half for Porter. Kavanaugh going to get some more minutes, and uh, Jason Matthews is going to come up. Jason Williams, after a little stint on the bench, will come back into the game. And he'll be replaced by Wardan. He'll be the main man down the stretch. Jason Williams, look for Louie to really try to get it into him. Or look for Pitt to try to find Shorter. Darrell Porter makes two free throws. He has double figures, 10. There you see the time remaining, 67 to 65, two point St. John's lead. And the Redmen have the ball. Matt Frost in the backcourt with Jason Buchanan. Pitt is really trying to deny the backcourt. Kavanaugh matched up against Mullen, trying to deny it. Sean Miller does a fine job. Normally deny the ball. He's trying to not to let Buchanan get it. Buchanan lobs it in. To Matthews. Travel. No basket. I don't think Williams Jason realized him. how wide open he was down low on that one. He hesitated. Caused him to drag the pivot foot. He's been sitting on the bench for a couple of minutes. Not back into the flow yet. Terrell Porter and Miller. It'll Jason Matthews and Brooklyn and Shorter in there for Pitt right now. Little offensive defensive substitutions by Evan, and, and he's got Matthews back into the lineup for offense. Brooklyn. 
Here's Matthews. Reloading Matthews oh. off the glass. See, we've seen that a number of times in this game. Backcourt people getting it done off the boards. All tied at 67, Ron Curry, and we've got four minutes and 15 seconds remaining from Alumni Hall here at St. John's University. Just another Big East game. Looks like it could go down to the wire again. They usually do. Singled in against Booker. 14 for Singleton. St. John's wants to attack in the paint area. Really like the way Singleton gets it in there, uses his body, keeps the ball up high. Miller on the point. Short is the go-to guy right now for Bid. Oh, oh, he went and got it. Tough shot. Real tough. 16 now for Brian Shorter. Well, we're seeing some brute strength taking over in this game down low. Still think the difference can get it going down the stretch might be Sean Miller or Matthews from the perimeter for Bitt. Don't forget, though, the Johnny's always tough here at home. Back and forth we go. The game is retied at 69. Oh, what a battle inside. Brooking, he might have gotten away with a hole down there on Williams. Pitt will come back with the ball. Had a chance to go ahead. Three minutes and 20 seconds to go as we look at Luke Karnaseka. He certainly thought it was a hole. <laughs> Man D by St. John's. On with it most of the game. It's shorter again, though, huh? No two guy in this sequence. Not that time. <laughs> Brooklyn saying, hey, that was your call. <laughs> Brooklyn got the foul. I think they both had him for a foul, though. Gonna come back down the other way and shoot one and one. Well, it's turning out right now that Paul Evans wants to get it down low to Brian Shorter, and Louie wants to see if he can get it to Jason Williams. But if there's any kind of slack off, the other people have to step up, step up. A guy like Russ, he's always tough in crunch time. Jason Williams, the leading scorer this night. On St. John's, Jason Williams has 17. Martin is into the game. Porter leaves, so there's some more size in there now for Pitt. That's right. Anytime you see Shorter and Martin in there, yeah, that was a violation on Sean Miller. Sometimes the player gets the momentum leading forward and they can't hold up. Williams held on just long enough to get Miller into the lane area before he released the ball. In addition to Williams' 17 points, he also has 12 rebounds. Oh, what a, another just solid night, quietly getting it done. Double-double. Oh, he can't get it down. And no second shot either. Shorter corrals the rebound. Sean Miller comes up. Couldn't take advantage of the violation. Under three to play, all tied at 69. St. John's and Pitt. Pitt working a double stack offense. He'll try to keep Shorter and Martin down low. Martin against Williams. And Bobby Martin connects. He has 17. And Pitt with the lead. St. John's with the ball. Jason Buchanan gingerly comes up into the front court. He'll be met up by Sean Miller. Gannon wants to do it himself. Miller fouled it. Third foul on Sean. That was an isolation for Jason Buchanan. He felt he wanted to get it done in his own, forced it a little bit. Did have the presence of mind, though, to get himself to the line. Still each club with two timeouts remaining, 223 to play, 71-69 Pitt. Buchanan will try to pull things even. He's halfway there. He's a good free throw shooter. Came into the game shooting 86%. Needs to work a little bit on his perimeter shot off the move, but he's been right on from the line. Doesn't waste any time. He works quickly, and he does tie it up at 71. Every possession now, very, very important. All tied, 71 all, Pitt and St. John. Floor general so important here, and Sean Miller in complete charge of this Pitt club. Big guys are posted up down low. That thrust with a rugged rebound. The three-point shot, normally an ally of Pitt. Really been an enemy, and this one hasn't gone. I think they want to get some ball moving here. They'll try to find Jason. Williams down low. Rust against Brookin. Oh, 
Nice steal. Matthews with the mistake oh. from Brust. And back comes Pitt. Still 71 apiece. A lot of time on that shot clock to force it down. And that was your game clock in the right-hand corner. This thing's winding down. Still knotted up. Minute and a half to go. John Miller will go the other side to Rod Brookett. Oh, look at the position inside. Martin shut down. Matthews takes it to the hole. In and out. Single with a big defensive rebound. A minute 15 to go. Still 71 apiece. St. John's in pit. That's a good shot for Matthews. It normally goes. Louis says, hey, this thing's getting down to the wire. Let's talk it over. That's all that remains. We're even. We'll be back right after this. Tonight's ball game. Shorter, checking in with 16. Some balance there along that front line. Martin and, and Brooken. And Jason Buchanan's had an outstanding game, Ron Perry. He has 17 points out of the backcourt for St. John's. Yeah, he really has. He's outscored the Pitt backcourt by himself. Miller and Matthews with a combined 16 points. So Pitt's done it inside. St. John's a little better balance between outside and in. St. John ball, a minute, nine seconds to go. Tied up at 71 and Alumni Hall. Oh, money players right now. Jason Williams for New York, for uh, St. John's and Ryan Shorter for Pitt. Under 60 seconds to play. Buchanan double clutch. Defensive rebound, Shorter. Single was on him. Back down the other way we go for free throw tosses. Number four on Singleton. What a monster rebound by Shorter. Now free throws. I mean, free throws are as critical early in a game as they are late. They hurt Pitt badly in the Villanova game. Not much of a fact in the first half of this one, but down the stretch clearly in this one, they'll be critical. Tonight, Shorter has hit five of eight from the line. Pittsburgh, not quite as good as St. John's from the line this game. Shorter has another one coming. That was a big one. The second one's usually easier. Usually a lot easier. That one up there nicely and perfect. 18 points for Brian Shorter. That Two obviously point pit lead, Ronnie. Obviously puts the pressure now on St. John's. Don't forget with the three-point shot, anything can happen, and they could take the lead. Russ certainly a factor from that distance, but I think they're going to try to go down the trenches again, if possible. 39 seconds remaining. We're there. Scoops and scores. What a beauty. We're yes, there. 30 seconds remaining, tied again at 73. Jason Williams threw such a crowd that Wardan had the oh, big no. alley right to the goal. Pitt uses up one of their, what, two remaining timeouts. This thing has played itself out right down to the wire. And that's all the time that remains. <laughs> Did it last year. In fact, they won both games against St. John's last year. Right now, Pitt has the ball. All tied, final 23 seconds. The other thing St. John's doesn't want to do is reach in and foul here. Miller's got to be careful not to get a five-second call. That's why he dished it there. He'll look to penetrate with about eight to go. All in is on Miller. Got to be careful here not to get five. Uh, Brooking in the corner. Spins to the baseline. Back rim, no. Martin, will he get a little chance? No. Martin at the buzzer. Whoa. Don't go away, folks. <laughs> OT time. All right. This is our first one run. May not be the last in Big East play. Another even battle here. St. John's and Pitt. Well, I kind of hope not. All right, we're going to play a five-minute overtime at least. We'll be back right after this. All on the campus of St. John's University, and we go into overtime, a five-minute. All tied up at 73 apiece. Each team now gets an extra timeout, so now both teams will have two. Plus, for the overtime session, similar to the beginning of the game, the only other time you'll see the old jump ball situation. To start off the overtime. I kind of miss that. I like seeing that during tie-up situations during a game. I understand the reason they went to the alternating possessions with these tall guys. Pretty tough for the refs to get accurate tosses up there. We're down against Martin. Like that. Seem to hit it on the way up. Yeah, see, that's a quick tip, and all of a sudden you're throwing it up between two 6'10 guys. Pretty tough to do. I thought where Dan quick tipped it, and a lot of times if that happens, they give the ball to the opposing team. Refs felt it was just a bad toss, though, but good back tip by Pitt to gain possession. 
first basket so critical, Frank, in an overtime session to gain momentum. John Miller delivers to Brooklyn. Now to Shorter, he can do it, and he does there. Brian Shorter. That can hurt, especially if you catch that right on the eye, the flick. I believe he's going to stay in the game. He's okay. Yeah, waters the eye up, but it's like he's okay. Pitt leads by two. Four minutes and 29 seconds remaining. Overtime just underway. Pitt's been making it very difficult for Jason Williams to get it down low last few possessions. Martin's been fronting up. Stewart has been helping weak side. Mullen delivers to Wardan. Offensive. Ball goes around the other way. Martin felt, the, Martin felt the pressure and he really went down. That's a huge defensive play. St. John loses a lot of size with Wardan checking out. Watch the contact here and Martin just goes with it. There it is. Feels it. Probably gets a little Hollywood action for that one, but there was pressure and he went with it. Did a good job to draw the foul. Wardan is fouled out of the game. Singleton is in along with Russ, Williams, Buchanan, and Terrence Mullen. Now, St. John's loses some size down there, but Singleton will match up with Shorter. He's got the good, good ball to do it. Quick pull up pop by Miller. No, but he gets a second chance. Yeah, nice job by Miller. Didn't have it again. He said, hey, let's back it out, work the shot clock, and work the game clock. He logged a lot of minutes as the Big East freshman of the year last year. And he is a sophomore, but some of these sophomores have played a lot of minutes, so they're not necessarily sophomores in terms of experience. That is a three. That's a big three. Jason Matthews has 14, and it's 78, 73, hit. Now, oh, this is a big possession for St. John's. They've got to find a way to move the basketball and get it to Williams. He's got to touch it more inside. Redmond haven't scored in the overtime yet. Three minutes, 19 seconds remaining. And they're wasting a lot of time here. There's still plenty of time to go. Russ looked like he wanted to square up for three. Good reach in there, and Pitt comes back, and it's been all Pitt here in the overtime. That was the 21st turnover for the Redmen. Pitt right now has half as many. They protected the ball much better. That's right. That hasn't been against a lot of Pitt pressure either. There's been more in this second half. It's been a long time since we've seen Pitt in this kind of control, now controlling the tempo themselves, which St. John's did much of the game. Classic two upon his offense. 78-73. The Panthers. Working that. Nine to go. And that shot clock. Foul is on Terrence Mullen. It's not really a good foul by Mullen. Just ran over Miller, who's one of the best in the nation from the foul line. John Miller only has five points in this game. That's a big surprise. He has struggled from the onset, shooting it from the perimeter. Has not taken many shots here in the second half and hasn't been to the line. And sometimes when you haven't been to the line, you know, the key one, obviously, is the first one to get acclimated to that distance again. Has not had a good night. Far below his effort. That was right on. John Miller has made 53 of 58 free throws. Better than 91 percent. Got them both. And that's a pretty, good, pretty good sign of the night when he has struggled shooting the ball. Those were critical. Those are big numbers when Pitt can get the tempo of the game going. This hasn't been an up-tempo game. But they're pushing the threshold right now, which is, yeah, they win a lot when they get up over that 80 number. It's on Pat Cavanaugh at Pitt. 229 remaining, 80 to 73, Pittsburgh. On the other hand, St. John's has been 11 and 2 this year when they've held the opponent under 70 points. And St. John's has done their best in this game to try to keep the tempo down. It's been pretty strong inside. Difficult to do it. Jason Buchanan is 5 of 6 from the line. He's had a big offensive night. He has 17 points. Won't get a second try. That pit will come back down. So the Redmen having trouble here in the overtime. Yeah, it looks like Pitt's going to just work the clock right now. 1-3-1 one, one action trapping by St. John's. 
Miller and Matthews both right around that 90% mark from the line. Two, two minutes and five seconds remaining. Tough guys to foul. Seven point Pittsburgh lead. Shot clock is at nine. Oh, Martin and Martin both missed up. Martin missed an easy one. Buchanan against Miller. Swatted away by Brook and Buchanan got it back. There's a big rebound by Shorter. St. John's hasn't found any offense in this overtime session, and it's really been since the late stages of the game that Jason Williams was able to get the ball. Good defensive effort by Pitt, but they've been unable to find their main guy. There's the foul. Clock shows a minute and 24 seconds to go in the five-minute overtime, and St. John's yet to score. It's a pretty gritty comeback by Pitt. Louie had things his way in this game. He's going to try to ice Matthews a little bit. One of his timeouts right here. But it's just been kind of a stalled offense for St. John's down the stretch. Well, Matthews at the line this evening has hit two of two. And we're going to step out one more time. Minute 24 to go. We'll be back right after this. 24 to go in this overtime, and it has been all pit in the five-minute extra session. Jason Matthews at the free throw line. The 90 is he at two of two. Jason Matthews has 14, make it 15. Very quietly edged himself up to his average. He was sort of not around the ball a lot in this one, but he's made some key baskets in the second half, and he's got, he makes this one, Frank, 14 second half and went into the overtime session points. And he does. It's a big thing, though, for Pitt is they got the first basket in this overtime. They got it down to Shorter, who got it done. And Jason Williams in the inability of St. John's to get him the ball in the key time. Then they got a quick three, too, and suddenly they had five points. Nine zip in the overtime for Pitt. Controlling it. The Redmen have just gone cold here. Give him five seconds to go. All Pitt has to do now is milk that clock. Work it down. This is kind of fun time when you get yourself to this position. One of the more frustrating things to be on defense here, you know, down by nine like this. With 52 seconds remaining, Brust makes his presence known against Jason Matthews. An aggressive one, but Matthews and Brust give each other five after that one. And Matthews was still standing after the aggressive foul. Brust, the competitor, got to be frustrated the way this thing's wrapped up for the Redmen. The end of regulation, it was 73 all. And that's where it is still for St. John's. 82-73, Pitt 83. 73-10 point lead for the Pitt Panthers. Miller's made a couple of big free throws in the overtime. Matthews has been deadly. Shorter got him off the mark with the first field goal, and Pitt hasn't looked back. 18 points for Jason Matthews. Kind of a quiet 18. And the lead is 11. It's been all set. Pitt here in the overtime. And the Panthers close to going to 11 and 8 overall. Free try fails. And that edges Pitt up in the standings. They came in at three and four, so this will get them firmly into the middle of the pack. They'll leave St. John's just behind them, so there's a lot of lot of positioning going with the Big East standings. Some outstanding players in tonight's ball game between Pitt and St. John's, but the Plymouth player of the game is who, Ron Perry? Uh, you've got to like the way Brian Shorter played in this ball game, and he got it done in crunch time down the stretch. He was dominant off the boards, 21 points, 10 rebounds, and he was the man that Pitt really went to when they needed to get the goals. Well deserved. Matt Brust. That's for three. Got it. Little too little, too late though for St. John's, and they use up their last time out. 32 seconds to go. Not much you can say either at this point. All you can say is let's try to, you know, finish up as strongly as we can, but short of a miracle down by eight and you don't have the ball, there's not much you can do. I really don't like to see a team reach in and foul here because all it really will do is make the margin of victory that much bigger for the opposing team. Hard fourth game, though, and St. John's control tempo really hit the boards hard. They had to play without Malik Seeley in this one, so they had to go with even... You know, some more experienced, inexperienced players like Barry Milhaven and Terrence Mullen. You got to credit, credit Pitt. I thought the turning point, Frank, was second half when they switched into some full court pressure, went man-to-man -man defense, because before that, I thought the 2-3 zone was very passive against St. John's. And there you see the score with 32 seconds to go in this overtime. 
as Matt Press just hit a three to make it look closer. And it was the first three and first points in the overtime for Luke Karnaseka and St. John's. Full court pressure now by St. John's. Oh, they've got one. Single and no. Jason Williams climbing high. Oh. He's got to be. He's got to be a little bit frustrated here. He hasn't gotten the ball down the stretch. He's tried to even come out for it a little bit. But Kidd has put the blanket on him at the end. Matthews leaves. Martin comes in. Very tough, Frank. If you're a big guy, sometimes if you're a backcourt man, you can create your own shot. But as a big guy, somehow it's got to be delivered to you. Rod Brooklyn comes out of the game for Pitt. 26 seconds is all that is left. Terrence Mullen got it. Perfect. There's two consecutive three-point field goals. 84 to 79. Pitt. Ball at five. He's out of here. Yep. High point a lot of minutes. Yeah. Got the job done. I mean, for minutes out there, played aggressively. He had a busy, busy night, Terrence Mullen, the freshman. So Daryl Aiken comes in. Played hard. Well, Pittsburgh has had numerous opportunities in the overtime, and St. John's has had only two chances. Paul Evans comment to me before the game was he thought the free throws were critical in the loss to Villanova, the one-point defeat. They certainly have been the opposite key moments in this game. Six-point lead. Russ tries. Nothing. Yeah, that's a battle underneath on the baseline, though, I guess, by Pitt. Trying to outlet the basketball, and if anything else with four to go, it'll just be St. John's. Trying to get that number a little bit closer, but not enough to try to pull it out. You can and in and out. Oh, wow. And that's it, but a little bit too little, too late. So, it's Pittsburgh winning this ball game by the count of 85 to 81. Final comment, Ron Perry? Well, I guess I have to give credit to Pitt on the road to hang tough, to play some better defense more aggressively, get it down low and pull out a win. Tough one at Alumni Hall. So along with Ron Perry, this is Frank Daly. Again, the final score, Pittsburgh 85, St. John's 81 in overtime. The preceding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production.